A few hours after the businesswoman picked up her piece of paper with my message, she came back down the aisle and sat in the seat beside me. She bent over, trying to stay low. So, you're stuck too? She asked. I kept my voice low. Yeah, my name's Jack, by the way. I'd say nice to meet you, but... She nodded. I'm Mary. You're wrong. Getting your message was by far the best thing about the past day. I've spent the last day and a half thinking I was alone in this. She paused for a moment, looking up the aisle. When she spoke again, her voice was a whisper. So, Jack, you have any theories on what the hell was going on? I considered lying, but decided the truth was for the best. I think we might be dead. Mary shook her head. Maybe if it were just me, or just you. If this was some cosmic train to hell, why would there be two of us who realize what's going on? No idea. Mary pulled out her phone and handed it to me. It displayed the Wikipedia article for flight MH370, the airline that disappeared in 2014. I read through the article carefully. There were dozens of theories trying to explain what happened. They ranged from hypoxia to suicide to aliens. Doesn't tell us much, I said. Not much other than that this may have happened before, she said. And how about you? Any theories as to why anyone else can't see what's going on? We talked it over and realized one thing we had in common was that we were both fast asleep at 4.03 a.m. There's no way we were the only ones asleep at that time, though. Maybe everyone else was just napping. I don't know about you, but I was well and truly asleep. The cabin lights flicked off, and a dozen red emergency lights in the floor flicked on, casting the cabin in a red glow. The intercom crackled to life. Passengers, please return to your seats. The seatbelt sign is fastened, and we may experience some turbulence. We'll be landing in about an hour. Mary froze. Should I go back? She asked. Maybe they won't notice if you're gone, but maybe they already know, and they're just trying to separate us. Mary nodded. We should stay together. That's a better idea. The intercom crackled again. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce the arrival of the captain. We'll all be given the opportunity to speak with him. Please remain in your seats until he calls you. If you need assistance, don't worry. A flight attendant will happily help you on your way. Sounds of passengers getting to their feet echoed from further up in the plane. We sat in silence, trying to get a look through the curtains separating us from first class. The captain? I asked. No idea. But it didn't sound like they were talking about a pilot to me, did they? No. That's when a pungent sulfur smell hit us, so strong that I had to resist the urge to gag. It reminded me of the worst rotting eggs I'd ever smelt in my life. But the old woman sitting ahead of us didn't react. She just kept watching a movie on the back of her seat. Don't cough, I said to Mary. We fought it for a few long seconds before giving in, coughing hard and violently. <coughs> a second later, the curtain opened. Mary and I froze, staring down the now red fuselage. Four flight attendants passed through the curtain and made their way down the rows toward us, grins stretched wide across their faces. They were still crying, but this time the tears streaking their faces were darker. It's hard to say with the lightning, but it looked like blood. My eyes weren't drawn to them though. I looked over their shoulders at the figure standing near the front of the plane. It was a black silhouette standing beside the cockpit door. It was at least eight feet tall and pointing towards us with a single finger. It had called us. The bathrooms, I shouted. We ran towards the back of the plane, the flight attendants closing in behind us. Blood dripped from their grinning cheeks onto the carpet of the plane. The captain is here, he said in a perfect customer service voice. His grin widened as he moved towards us. We made it to the bathrooms, jumping onto opposite sides. I slammed the door shut and locked it, pressing my feet against the folding center part of the door to keep it closed. They began banging on the door and pulling at the handle while I fought to keep it closed. I'm sorry, but you'll both need to speak with the captain, one of the flight attendants said. Jack! Mary screamed. Jack, help! A distinct snapping sound like breaking metal came from her bathroom. She continued to scream as the sounds of struggle migrated up towards the front of the plane. 
towards the black figure I had seen. I'd like to say I jumped out and fought them, that I distracted them or did something heroic. I didn't. She was carried away, and a few short seconds later, her screaming was cut off. That was a few hours ago, and I'm still locked inside the bathroom. I keep trying not to think of what they've done with her. The thing at the front of the plane didn't seem human. I hope it didn't kill her. Not after she was shouting for my help like that. I, I couldn't take it. I haven't heard any movement outside in a few hours, but I'm terrified to open the door. I'm far from the seat outlets, so my phone's almost dead, and I haven't eaten in way too long. If I go out there, will the flight attendants remember? What if that thing is still waiting for people? I don't have much time to make a decision. I'll update you all here with what happens next.